Hello everybody! I already filmed this video so forgive me if this is a little bit shorter than usual. I think I'm gonna just, in some of these cases, just throw out my picks. You can see them made there. Uh, normally I make them right in front of you, but like I said, already kind of did them, went through a lot of them. So, uh, talk about Conor McGregor, uh, May, uh, Floyd Mayweather a little bit. Uh, fight went largely like I thought it would. I thought it would probably be a, a ninth round TKO. I wanted to be a 10th round TKO. So it was a round off. I thought early on, Connor's awkwardness, more MMA influenced style, excuse me, I need a little drink, would be enough to confuse Mayweather, um, give him some problems, and it did. I thought it would take two rounds probably to figure out. It took about three. So Connor did. Better than I expected, but pretty much bang on the money. And I, to people who were not expecting that either side, the the boxers, boxing fans who thought they would he'd knock him out in the first round, I think your your regard for the toughness of MMA fighters is really underpowered. And to the people who thought Connor was going to win. I mean, these are the people I've been arguing with on Twitter and stuff for for quite some time. I think you're crazy. So, let's move on. I've got Holbrook by sub, basically on the basis that I think his game is actually built for the UFC, even if his chin isn't, whereas I don't like really any elements of the ball goatee's game. Uh, kind of the same for uh, Bojan Mihailovic versus Abdul Kar uh, Karim uh, Edeloff. Edeloff, I think, can actually make some some noise in the division despite the fact that you know he comes from a part of the world that is questionable at best uh, but yeah you can't can't ignore the skills he has just because I probably don't care for some of his political views uh, I am Bojan Mihailovic has really been kind of a puzzle as to why he really ever got signed and why he's still getting fights uh, Z uh, Zabit uh, Megamed Sharapov versus Mike Santiago. I'm expecting Santiago to give him some trouble on the feet. Um, actually, a pretty good boxer. He's also a lot bigger than a lot of the people that uh, Zabit has fought in the past. Zabit's used to being both a te uh, technically very superior fighter and a very much larger fighter, which is not necessarily the case in this fight, so that could be a problem. But I believe his game is a little bit too deep, and Santiago has been a little bit too irregular in activity for me to really have a great deal of uh, faith in him. Franz Morbrosa I see just being too big for Alexander uh, Rakic, who is graduating from a regional scene of MMA that isn't very good, isn't very diverse, and isn't very big. If they're not really big on weight cutting, like I, I don't quite know if Rakic is gonna end up in the weight, this weight class or end up going down, to be honest. Uh, or putting on some muscle to deal with uh, bigger guys. And I, I just don't think his game is really built for it right now. So, Barroza. Who's the Havilov? Desmond Green. I got Havilov winning in a pretty boring decision. Although, I will say if you can find like big underdog odds on Desmond Green, which I found a couple of places, might be worth a bet. I think he's got an athleticism ability. I think he's got wrestling that could definitely give some problems to Havilov. I don't believe that this is a walkover fight. But I do believe Hobolov will win. But I believe that the odds being given are overly flattering to Ustam Hobolov. Michelle Prezeris. I've got him submitting Mads Brunel, but I could see it also going the distance. Um, Brunel's game is built around a pretty nice head front headlock game in a developing volume striking game that actually isn't bad. Like, to be clear, it's really not bad. But it's not the type of game that's built to beat Michelle Prezeris unless you're really top of the food chain that Burnell is not on a technical level or a physical level. I'm actually making a slight change to my prediction for Mirbek Tysimov and Felipe Silva. I'm going to say Tysimov finishes him because he is pretty big, pretty powerful. Um, the deal here is that Felipe Silva really is actually a, an entertaining fighter and a fighter I, I do actually like a lot. But Tysimov is a fighter who I've been talking about for a long time before he got to the UFC. Very, very good. Hard hitting, good wrestling, good counter wrestling, uh, well put together striking game. Head movement is bad defensively. That's why he is he's taggable. 
but unless you can knock him out with one punch, I don't think it's really a huge problem because his footwork is actually quite good. So he gets tagged, but his feet tend to take him away from um, from the danger. And actually, you know, it, it works, despite the fact that I would say if I was one of his coaches, I'd be imploring him to take a drink. Um, I'd implore him to fix that, but it is working. Should be a fun fight. I'm looking forward to it. Probably one of the one of the few fights on this card I am looking forward to. Uh, Darren Till I have being just too technically deep for Bojan Velichkovic, who's a bit of a bit of a mauler, um, showing some technical sides to his game. Most recently in the Nico Masoki fight, I hope to see more of that. But uh, as much as I don't actually have a tremendous amount of faith in Darren Till in the long run. I, I do have faith in him being able to beat an opponent that is significantly less, less athletic and significantly less technical than he is. Brian Barberina versus Leon Edwards. I've seen a lot of people beat picking Leon Edwards. Um, I can see why. Um, he does definitely have a higher ceiling, more athleticism, faster, but he doesn't hit necessarily that hard. And he doesn't, honestly, he doesn't necessarily deal with pressure very well. It like smothers his his output a lot. And Barbarain is very good at doing that. Edwards' response to that has historically been work takedowns to use um, his improving wrestling game to bring the fight to the ground to break that kind of pressure. But Barbarena, as long as you're not Colby Covington, should be able to be like, no, 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 no. My wrestling is better than your wrestling. You're going to have a real hard time taking me down. And while you're going for it, I'm going to be beating up your body. You're going to be beating up your head. And that's how this fight's going to go. So I got Barbarena. But uh, it's an interesting enough fight. One of the more interesting ones on the card. Uh, Marion Renault versus Talita D'Olivera. This is supposed to be Jermaine Duramdine, which was going to be a, a much better fight. But uh, yeah, I see D'Olivera going for a takedown, either getting it or Renault reversing it or ending up just pulling guard and getting a tap out. I think Renault, <sighs> you're, you're vastly underestimating Marion Renault's game if you're going to be an aggressive sub uh, attacker and D'Olivera really is exactly that and her game is so built around it that I hope she fights in a nutshell kind of dumb because the last thing I really want to do is watch these two girls fight a boring low volume kickboxing fight which I imagine Renault would still win uh, Sierra Bahad is out of Rob Wilkinson Rob Wilkinson I'm, I, I can't bring myself to pick him too many, too many unknowns like the problem is he's fought guys who I don't really have any any reference for how good their skills on any real area are and he's won that Bahadazada has beaten guys who I do know even if I don't necessarily have a lot of confidence in them so with CR there's a lot I don't necessarily trust about his game but with Rob Wilkinson there's a lot that I don't know about his game so going with CR uh, not a fight that should be co-headlining this card. Let's put it that way. Uh, Stefan Struve versus Alexander Volkov. Battle of two really tall guys. And that's that's kind of really all the uh, the promotion the UFC has actually put into this. It's just these two guys are really, really tall. And that's some weak, weak, weak um, promotion, to be honest. But it's the UFC. They've never really been tremendously interested in... Um, Promoting the fight pass cards to the to to the American and Canadian Western world public in general, they've never been particularly big at actually being able to promote fighters. Um, the fighters that have gotten over largely have been able to promote themselves and create their own narrative that the UFC sometimes uh, goes with, but that's about it. But anyways, enough bashing the UFC brass. Let's talk somewhat about the fight. Uh, we're dealing with two. Pretty tall guys. Um, I do actually like a lot about both of their games. Uh, there are things I don't like about both their games. Struve is still, I think, too hittable. And his chin, when he does get hit hard, it's really hard. And he tends to go down. That's largely why I'm going with Volkov. With Volkov's game, 
I actually rather like how most of it's put together, although for a guy as tall as him, he's a little too embracing of the clinch. Um, something I think he should be able to keep his range better. Shouldn't be a concern in this fight, though. Struve doesn't particularly like the clinch himself, and Struve is a very tall guy, so I'd almost say that Volkov's best place to be is the clinch. So, not really so much of a big deal. I see both of them fighting probably at a slightly higher pace than they're used to because I think when fighters are presented with less reach advantage or no reach advantage to what they are used to, uh, they tend to throw a little bit more because unlike before where they're like, okay, I'm safe here. <laughs> nope, no, I'm not. Um, the response to that sometimes is to up, amp up the volume and uh, kind of hoping for that because I think this could be good. Um, I think they'll both be tired. At some point and I think Volkov will find his chin and uh, not knock him out but put him down long enough to throw some ground and pound and get the fight finished so Alexander Volkov actually kind of an interesting fight but uh, the star power on this card is pretty lacking and there's only like three maybe four fights I'm really looking forward to so not the best offering from the UFC, especially in the wake of Conor McGregor versus Floyd, uh, Floyd Mayweather. So I'll leave it at that. So usual stuff in the bottom. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're enjoying your day.